This is where you might need the paper and pen, guys. So the things that we're going to discuss, we're going to discuss optimal diet protocols, optimal training protocols, um, supplements to boost testosterone. We're going to go into what you need, how much, and uh, lifestyle factors to also boost T. And this is one of our clients. Um, he competed, dieted down. So as you can see, he was looking very estrogenic in the first pictures. And on the after ones, he was looking very lean, very muscular, and his testosterone was definitely higher in the second one. All right, supplements to boost testosterone. We touched upon all these earlier. So vitamin C, 1,000 milligrams post-workout to be taken immediately post-workout. And uh, I would recommend using branched-chain amino acids with that. You can head on over to NewYorkMuscleRadio.com, click on that products tab, and pick up uh, BCAAs from us. Um, you use those post-workout along with 100 milligrams of vitamin C, 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C, I'm sorry. Um, vitamin D3, you're going to take anywhere between 3,000 to 4,000 I use daily. It doesn't matter when you take it as long as you take it every day. Vitamin E, you're going to take 300 I use, again, post-workout. You're going to take the vitamin E and the vitamin C along with your BCAAs immediately post-workout. Zinc, 30 to 50 milligrams before bed with three to six milligrams of copper. Now, you'll probably see a zinc supplement, a ZMA, um, you know, all these other crazy contraptions that you've seen with zinc. I wouldn't go crazy buying those. Just get regular zinc, look for 30 to 50 milligrams and pick up a basic copper, you know, three to six milligrams. Magnesium has been shown to increase testosterone, but from what I've noticed and everything that I've studied, zinc seems to be the better one of the two. So save money and just pick up the zinc with the copper. And again, the magical one, boron, 10 milligrams taken daily in the morning will definitely increase that testosterone as we learned earlier. Now, the ashwagandha, this is a special one. So you're going to have to type this in exactly. KSM-66 ashwagandha root extract. You're going to take anywhere between 300 to 500 milligrams daily, uh, preferably before bed. It'll help you sleep. And again, it, that's kind of like one of the magical ones. And then Taxidrol, two capsules taking daily, uh, one in the morning and one midday. So again, if you're looking at all this, you would take basically the Taxidrol and the Boron in the morning. Um, then you're looking post-workout to take your vitamin C and E along with BCAAs. And then I would say midday tonight, you could even use the Taxidrol, the Ashwagandha, and then the uh, vitamin D3. You have anything you want to add to that? That's basically the uh, the stack. That's the stack. That's a New York Muscle Radio approved stack. You're not going to find that anywhere else. Um, that's not like a typical uh, supplement protocol that you'll find. Yeah, because it's not sexy. Right. And that's based all off of scientific evidence mm -hmm. of what actually does raise testosterone. So if you supplement with that stuff, you're definitely going to be, you know, packing a big punch as far as uh, increasing your testosterone through supplementation. Yep. So optimal diet protocols. So in order to maximize testosterone through nutrition, you should be focusing on consuming an optimal macronutrient ratio. So your protein should be anywhere between 20 to 30% of your total calories. Again, this is just uh, one of the formulas. We want to keep our protein enough to stimulate protein synthesis, but not high enough where it takes away from the other macronutrients that we need. We got to keep our carbs anywhere between 40 and 35 and um, sorry, 40 and 50% of total calories. Low carbohydrate diets actually will increase cortisol and increase SHBG, which in turn will actually lower testosterone. So your body is always going to be stressed out when it's under low carbohydrate diet. Yeah, so we got to keep our make sure our carbohydrates are essential there and keep them at 40 to 50%. Then we got our fat, which is the primary one here. We're going to go 30 to 40% of the total calories. So we put together an example for you guys, for you guys to follow. So again, you guys get out your paper and pen here. You could write this down. So sample diet here. There's Pete. Oh, there's Jif. Jiffy. <laughs> yeah, you see that 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 <laughs> Jif uh, peanut butter probably contains partially hydrogenated uh, vegetable oils, cottonseed oils, or anything like that. Um, so yeah, that, that, out of what he's eating right there, that's probably the worst thing in terms of, uh, testosterone. The bread might have soy in it. Yeah. The bread probably has a little bit of soy in there. Probably a small amount though. All right. So in order to create the best possible diet for you and your goals, we need to establish what goals, what your goals are in order to properly determine how many calories you need in a day. So in order to lose fat, you say if you have, we'll do your body weight times 11, if you have a slow metabolism. Body weight times 12 if you have an average metabolism. Body weight times 13 if you have a fast metabolism. To gain muscle, you're going to do body weight times 16 if you have a slow metabolism. 
body weight times 18 if you have an average metabolism, and body weight times 12 if you have a fast metabolism. So an example, a diet for a 200-pound male with an average metabolism looking to gain muscle, let's say that's how much you weigh right now, um, your calories would be 3,600. We just took 200, we times it by uh, 18, which was the number there on the screen, and we got 3,600 calories. So we took 25% of the protein, and that brought us to a protein total of 25, uh, 225 grams. Um, carbohydrates, 405 grams a day. A day. Again, it was 45% of 360, uh, 3,600 calories. And then the fats, 120 grams a day, or 30% of 3,600 uh, 3, calories a day. And this is how we figured it out. Very simple formula. And as you can see, there are the macros there. We practice flexible dieting here at New York Muscle Radio. We believe that that is the most optimal way to get success, get results, and again, maximize testosterone because you can eat what you want. You're not locked into eating just um, you know, oatmeal, brown rice, you know, broccoli, and things like that. You know, you're able to eat whatever you want. But again, if we're maximizing testosterone, you have to watch the labels for the soy. You got to make sure you stay out of that because, again, I was never one to contain eat soy in general. But after overlooking my diet and looking at everything that I was eating, everything had soy in it. So it was like I was consuming soy. Yep. And this will be optimal for anybody that's actually trying to gain muscle um, and maximize their testosterone. So that macronutrient ratio will do both. Um, if you're dieting, it's going to be a little bit different. But maximizing your testosterone generally goes hand in hand with a caloric surplus or maintenance. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, you're going to have to balance out what your goals are. Um, so generally, if you're trying to fix your testosterone or improve it, you're probably not going to benefit too much or as much while you're in a dieting phase. So it'll always work out a little better when you have extra calories to play with. Yeah. But again, if you're too overweight, you're not going to be in a more testosterone building environment. So you got to weigh the pros and cons. And I would say if you're over 15% body fat, you have to diet down. And uh, yeah, if you're under 15%, then you're good to go with a bulk. So let's talk about dietary fat. We mentioned it before, but I want to reiterate this. So dietary fat is the amount of fat, the amount you consume is important and it should be high. As you can see in the last example, 120 grams. However, there is a ceiling to the amount that should be consumed and consuming the wrong types can actually lead to decreased testosterone. So a quick quiz here for you guys. Which one, before I go to the next step here, which one will actually lower testosterone levels? We mentioned it earlier. So I'll give you a second. Da -na 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 -na. Na, 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 na. So that is PUFA. Polyunsaturated fat will. Oh, whoops. <laughs> PUFA was the one that actually decreases yeah. testosterone. But dietine sat uh, saturated fats and monounsaturated fat actually increase testosterone. So that, that's important. So out of the three that were listed earlier, the polyunsaturated fat, which is the bad ones, cottonseed oil, um, canola oil, um, soybean oil. Soybean oil, <laughs> thank you. That was the one I was looking for. Versus saturated fats, which comes from meats, butter, cheese, almonds, um, monounsaturated fat like avocado, almonds, almond butter, peanut butter, things like that. You want to be consuming more of that stuff. Dietine polyunsaturated fat decreases testosterone. So what fats to focus on? <laughs> Since I just said this, we'll reiterate this again. Since testosterone is our primary focus here, let's begin with what fats to eat. Again, olive oil, putting it all together. Olive oil, almonds, avocado, macadamia nut oil, peanut butter oil, red meat, butter, coconut oil, dark chocolate, eggs, cheese, and whole milk. So again, here, this is another one going back. How to inhibit aromatase enzyme and decreasing estrogen. So this is putting it all together for you guys. So we told you guys in the last slide here what fats to consume. So these should make up. So out of that last example where 120 grams of a day was fat, Majority of that fat should be coming from these sources. So you got to really fit in your protein in there. So again, using things like whole eggs, using things like cheese, using things like whole milk, you can get a decent amount of protein from those things. So again, maybe having more of your sources come from there as well. But again, also with your carbohydrate intake, make sure you, f you fit in plenty of high antioxidants foods, you know, your blueberries, your strawberries, um, you know, your vegetables are extremely important too. So eating a nice, well-balanced diet. All right. Let's